What's up, everyone? This is Peter, one of the hosts of Cobra Kai Companion. Uh, this is interview episode five with Nicole Brown, who plays Aisha, aka the Cobra Kai's first lady. Uh, this interview was back from uh, June 8th, 2018. At the time, Tom was uh, my co host on um, this coverage of Cobra Kai yet again before we started uh, Cobra Kai Companion. So, this is the interview. Hi, this is Nicole Brown. I played as Aisha on Cobra Kai, and you're listening to TV at My Brain Podcast. No mercy, bitch! Welcome to another episode of TV Ate My Brain, the official TV podcast of Core Temp Arts. And I am Peter, also host of Podstalgic. And I'm Tom, also host of T- Jake and Tom Conquer the World. Are you sure? I think so. <laughs> All right. The name changes every once in a while. Okay, so... For you guys, this is the Cobra Kai edition. We are back again with another episode. And I think if you're listening to this by now, I think we've already wrapped up our coverage. And this is the last episode until further notice. Uh, We have some more bonus content coming that are unplanned because anything Cobra Kai related, if we feel it's worthy of an episode, we're going to do it. Hell yeah. So today... We spoke with Nicole Brown, who played Aisha. Oh, uh, very, very cool uh, young lady. Uh, I, I've said it on the show. I'll, I'll say it again during the interview. Aisha is my favorite character of the new batch of uh, kids, by far. I think cool is an understatement. She yeah. was such a joy to talk to. We had so much fun. And even when we were done speaking to her, we talked a little bit more. Um, just extremely funny. And some of the things that she talks about or even says kind of catches you off guard a little bit. Not Kind of not what you expect. And I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, very down-to-earth, very smart person. Uh, and uh, it was just, uh, again, just a joy to talk to her. Yep. And so we enjoyed it, and hopefully you guys do too. And this is our conversation. Hey, Nicole, how are you doing tonight? I'm good. Good. I'm still eating. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for us before uh, we get started? Where's my money? Where's your money? Oh, I, I told you. I got to gotta spin the signs and show off my bits first. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. you be my little whore for a little while. Yes. Sorry. I, I, will, <laughs> I will let uh, Sensei Lawrence um, know when I have the money ready. Yeah, okay, good. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess we'll just go ahead and uh, get started. But uh, N- Nicole, can you... Talk a little bit about yourself. Are are you born and raised in ATL? Yeah, I am. Actually, I was born uh, in a town kind of close to Atlanta. And um, I have an uncle that was in the acting industry. So I kind of wanted to be an actress, too. And then I started doing acting school not too long ago. Actually, it was a while ago. Uh, When did I start doing that? I did it for seven years. So I was in acting school for about six, seven years. Um, so it's always been like a thing I've wanted to do. And um, so, yeah, I am from around here, though. And I I never moved. I've never, you know, been anywhere crazy. I've always been a Georgia girl. Now, uh, you know, you and I, we kind of talked offline a little bit. And how different are you from Aisha? Oh, oh, uh <laughs> Um, I'm more like Aisha before she became Cobra Kai, definitely. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm a little bit more on the shy side, you know. I, uh, I'm not as nearly as intense as she is, uh, but I do definitely respect her. I love her character, and I love playing as her. Uh, she's fun. She's very fun to play as, because, you know, she's just a total bitch sometimes. <laughs> and, um, it's just, it's just a fun thing. Um, uh, but yeah, I, um... I'm not quite like her. I mean, I definitely, if I'm getting bullied or something like that, I'll speak up. But um, I don't know. I'm not as aggressive as she is. Now, you're also one of the older cast members, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, I'm 17. Oh, you are? Um, yeah, I'm 17, actually. Oh, I'm one of the younger ones. I'm like the second youngest. I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Except for, yeah. So are you yeah. still in school, too? Well, I um, dropped out to film, 
And then I started doing classes online. So you're you're about the same age as Hannah then? Yeah, I'm the same age as Hannah. I'm a little bit older than her, I think, and I'm older than Shola. Okay. So were you familiar with the Credit Kid before auditioning for it? And what was the process yeah. like being that you're from Atlanta? Well, um, basically, um, yeah, I am. I'm familiar with the Credit Kid, obviously. I grew up with my grandparents. I live with them. So um, they showed me it, and I liked it. I never thought I was going to be in it. Uh, so that was crazy. You know, like, um, going from acting school, I got a spot, like a scout from AMT, which is the agency I'm with. And um, they saw me, they liked me, and I, they signed me. So I got them, and I had them for, like, a year before I even heard anything. And I finally got something, and I started getting, you know, a few – little tiny auditions here and there and I never got it and then all of a sudden I got this so I went from absolutely nothing to a supporting role and that was insane um it was intense <laughs> a huge change yeah I bet it was uh what were they looking for in Aisha and which scene did you read for um I actually read for the scene when I first meet Cynthia Lawrence and I walk in and I um tell them about how I was bullied and stuff and uh that whole little back and forth between Cynthia Lawrence and I and Aisha yeah um and that's sort of an emotional scene you know that's sort of like a hard scene to read and they really liked it they really enjoy it I had no idea I thought they hated it that's um, that's actually one of I my favorite scenes I did not expect to get a I know yeah it's um it was difficult filming some of that harder stuff, you know, like the fab stuff. Now, was there anything in the character that intrigued you? You mentioned that, you know, she's kind of intense. Oh, yeah, how she's... I love her. Like, if she was a person, I would definitely be friends with her, I think. Because I just love how confident she got and how much she changed. And I love how... She's obviously into Cobra Kai, and, and she took that, and she ran with it. She made that her growing point, and I, I really respected that. And, um, yeah, I really liked her. I love the way that her character changed. And I've um, since I stopped filming, I've changed a good bit, too. I lost over 60 pounds, and um, I shaved my head. <laughs> and stuff so season two is definitely going to be different for Aisha because she's going to look different well good good for you thank you <laughs> is, thank is that you. a bit of a confirmation um, there about your character maybe <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I haven't heard anything yet <laughs> I know that I can't help it you know I can't help how I look like if they want me to gain more weight I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say no because I don't want to <laughs> you know but like they're gonna have to I guess they're going to have to deal with what they got because, um, and I'm hoping that, you know, season two, if they do a season two, I'm not saying anything, but anyways, <laughs> if they happen to do a season two, uh, I'm hoping it'll be like a year later or something like that. So it makes more sense. So she's not just fat one season and then skinny the next season. That would be so confusing. Now, your character was introduced in episode two uh, at a country club. What was it like working with Ralph Macchio? Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, that was that was incredible. That was like I don't know how to explain it. It was like I heard nothing, and I did a little thing, and I was filming little things, and all of a sudden, boom! Country club, like crazy people running around in beautiful gowns, and all of a sudden, Ralph Macchio walks in, and I'm like, oh my god. You know, like freaking out, and everyone just looks beautiful, and I'm over here in an awkward looking dress, not knowing what to do with my hands, and I'm just kind of freaking out a little bit. And he was really nice. He was, um, and everyone was really nice. That's the thing about this cast that I was just so amazed with because I thought, I didn't know what to think really going in, but, um, just like I thought maybe some people would be, you know, arrogant or rude or something like that, the stereotypical busy um everyone you know worshiped me kind of thing but no everyone was so down to earth everyone was so humble and then the cast was just amazing to work with i loved everyone and i missed them so much yeah you you know i uh want to kind of pat myself on the back a little bit but i feel like i've been kind of part of the group 
unofficially like you know yeah. you, you guys are all yeah. so cool you know and i've you know yeah. i've spoken with a few of you guys already and you guys are all very nice and and generous you know and um you know giving with your time and and all that so i do appreciate you guys speaking with us yeah that's what i mean like i thought that people you know were just rude in the industry but apparently like i was so wrong on that at least in this thing i don't know the next thing i work on maybe they're going to be a bunch of jerks but <laughs> this one definitely they were very sweet um the writing on the show i feel is very specific and in the details now the scene where you uh, Aisha goes over to Sam and is like hey we should go as like so sodium chloride now as one unit yeah. that's like table salt right now yeah why do you think Sam at some point kind of grown apart from Aisha do, do you kind of get well, what I'm saying um, like I feel Aisha yeah. sees them as like as one but yeah. yeah, at some point, like they kind of grown apart, and Aisha seems to be the only one that doesn't know that. Yeah, see, it's sort of explained in the episode that I can't, like, I'm first in. It's like I haven't. I said my line is I haven't seen her all summer. Where's Sam? I haven't seen her all summer. So it's obvious that over summer, Sam and Aisha grew apart because Sam started hanging out with Yasmin and Moon and them. So it doesn't really show it. It doesn't really show that you know friendship going away but it's implied and I, I really appreciate that the writing and the writers are great yeah um and and also I, I really respected the fact that we didn't you know go crazy off script but if we felt it like if we felt the pull I guess to say something different um than the script they let us do it and I, I really respected them for that because like the writing was great but you know, sometimes you, it's just something natural that you feel and you do it. That's kind of what uh, Gianni <laughs> mentioned as well. Um, you know, they kind of gave you guys some you wiggle room. Gianni, I love sorry? Sorry, sorry. I said I love Gianni. Oh. <laughs> He's, that, that kid is going to be a comedian. He is so funny. I know. <laughs> He's the funniest guy I've ever met. Like, he would tell me to come over with him and we'd, like, go chase lizards and stuff <laughs> in between takes. Like, we would do the weirdest stuff. Yeah, I can see that in some of the photos that he's posted, too. He's definitely a character. Yes, he's so funny. Uh, your character, on many instances, is the subject of cyberbullying. Uh, how did you prepare yourself for some of those scenes like where you have to react? Well, um, I definitely was bullied when I was, like, a little bit. You know, like, everyone gets bullied. If they're not bullied, then they're probably the bully, you know? So it's just like, it's a, it's a part of life growing up. You get in this awkward situation and you say something stupid and everyone makes fun of you, you know? So it's just kept from past experiences and how I feel about myself, you know, low self-esteem and everything like that. I just brought it all back. And I brought like, I just, I just thought of things that had happened in my life and it just sort of projected. Um, it was definitely difficult, and I cried a little bit in some of the parts. Like, like when everyone was laughing at me at the Halloween party and stuff like that, that was uh, very intense, having over 100 people look and point and laugh at you. Yeah, that must have been very, very difficult. I can't even imagine. Yeah, not to mention while we were filming that, I was, like, growing up as well because I was eating Cheeto Puffs, and I'm allergic to Cheeto Puffs. So while I was eating, I was also in between takes throwing up. So it was just been a very intense thing. They, I that's interesting that they still made you do eat that even if you're allergic to it. Well, see, I said it. I said it because it looked great. It looked amazing. Eating pretzels would not have worked. It wouldn't have done it. You know? Yeah. I mean, who makes fun of someone eating pretzels? I was eating Cheeto Puffs. It was getting everywhere. It was getting all my costume, my face, my fingers. It looked amazing. So I was just like. Screw it. Who cares if I die? Let's film this right now. <laughs> I have to applaud your uh, your method acting in that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like I had a medic on the side. I had a trash can underneath the table. I had ginger ale and water next to me. And every time, like they, we did it twice. We filmed it twice. It was like a one-hit wonder, but they had to do it from two different angles. So I was just sitting there eating for 30 seconds, standing there eating not pay t paying attention to the cameras or anything, trying really hard to keep a straight face. But all the while I was gagging and retching, you know, like it was bad. 
So after we had finished filming, I ran to the bathroom, of course. But um, it was very intense. And the director at the time applauded me for it. And she felt horrible. But she was great. And everyone was great with it. <laughs> um, can you tell us about the day uh, you guys filmed the scene where Aisha goes to sign up uh, for Cobra Kai and spars with uh, Sholo, who plays Miguel? Uh, which part where she goes to Cobra Kai and she walks in and she talks to Johnny Lawrence? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, the, yeah, the, the one that you auditioned for. Oh, yeah. Well, that was uh, one of the first times I had filmed with um, Billy, Sister Zaxma. And that was intense because I, I was a really big fan of him and I'd watched him in other movies and stuff. And, you know, I thought he was going to be kind of a dick like he is with his character, but he is the nicest man I have ever met in my life. He is so sweet. He makes sure you're okay. And that was just so relieving because he's just such a sweetheart. Uh, and of course, I was nervous because I had never done anything like this. I've never filmed anything like this. And um, uh, like this was my first, this was my first like movie or anything, any film, anything. I don't know if y'all knew that, yes. but I've never filmed anything before this. So um, that was like relieving to have someone there comforting you, <laughs> I guess. But everyone was really nice about it. Um, and Sholo was really cool. She, he and I hit it off pretty good, I think. Uh, he was really nice to me. He seems like a really nice kid. He is a pretty cool kid. He, you know, he like constantly plays music all the time and stuff. Oh, does he actually listen to like '80s rock, like his character? Well, I mean, he he just listens to cool music, and we would <laughs> listen to it in the car on the way to places. Now we had a debate on our show, um, kind of about the scene here, and your character's father is a former football player. And, yeah. you know, you do a bit of a tackle on Miguel. Now, we were yeah. debating whether it was that a wrestling move or a football move. I don't know. It might be a wrestling move. I really think it was a wrestling move because they <laughs> had me stand over him. And I was he was on a mat and I had to meet him in the chest. But I was obviously going next to him. So every single like every retake, I just stand up and like count like a bunny on my friend. So that was, you know, weird. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I think if I had to say what it was, I would say wrestling. Okay, Tom wins that. Score one for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, earlier you'd mentioned that you're a very shy person, and normally when somebody is shy, you don't necessarily think of them going into acting for a profession. What was it about acting? What was it about acting that made you want to do it, and how did you overcome your shyness? Well, um, I overcame my shyness by doing acting, actually. That really helped. Um, with the acting school and everything, it made you get out of your comfort zone. There was three different things, on camera, improv, and then theater. And all of those things helped me overcome my fear of, like, what if someone judges what I say or do? Uh, it, it was just like, it was. I think it was a good idea for me to do that. Like, you, cause I obviously wanted to be an actress. I obviously wanted to do that. So, um, just life experiences, going to school, doing all that stuff, getting out of my comfort zone, doing plays, going to acting school. That all helped me get over my shyness a little bit. Excellent. And I'm still pretty socially awkward. Like, I'll say some weird stuff. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> I was gonna say we wouldn't know anything about that, would we? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> 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 now I I'm going to get this right out of the way uh, your character was probably my favorite new character in the entire series I absolutely thought she was just a blast to watch and the reason why I liked her so much was her character arc because unlike a lot of the other uh, kids in Cobra Kai she didn't really become the uh, the the bully where that you could say that maybe Hawk was that maybe uh, a, a bunch of others what was it about her character that didn't make her cross that line? I I think it was because her enemy, her issue, was the bully itself. You know, she turned around and got the girl that was bullying her, and that made everyone root for her. But she also sort of bullied Yasmin, you know, like the whole scene where I did the wedgie. You know, that was a pretty intense scene. That was a great turning point for her. But I think the whole reason why she wasn't considered a bully was because she got the bully back. But I do yeah. think that she has some, you know, aspects that can like be a bully, I guess. Like 
if Yasmin hadn't have been bullying her, if she had just not liked Yasmin and she did that to her, that would have been messed up, you know. But obviously, Yasmin was a total bitch, so she got her back. Now, I actually thought that, you know, she kind of used the appropriate measures because obviously she's trained to do any number of things, but she did just enough to prove her point and get Yasmin to leave her alone. Whereas, oh, no, it was. Yeah. I whereas, it. say, it was, Miguel may have taken things way too far. Oh, absolutely. So, did. so no, I, I absolutely just thought that uh, that your character was amazing. And uh, I got to give you all the credit in the world for it. You, you did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my Instagram went from like 400 followers to 1,000 followers in one day after it came out. <laughs> uh, and that was pretty insane. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that made me feel like I did a good job. Now, is this success of this kind of taking you by surprise, or did you always know as soon as you were on the set or reading the scripts, yeah, yeah, this is going to be a hit? Or did it take you by surprise? I knew it was going to be a certain level of, you know, popularity, because obviously, Karate Kid, people grew up with that. that it's going to be, you know, a reboot, but some people might think it's cheesy. Some people might think it's just going to be like a money pit or something like that. Um, I thought that maybe it would have been a little cheese balls, you know, but uh, I was very impressed with it. I was very impressed with the outcome. It was not nearly as cheesy as I thought it was going to be. And uh, it, it did surprise me a little bit. It did a little bit, but um I'm just glad that it took off like it did, and hopefully there will be a season two. Now, uh, we were talking a little bit about that beach scene and the whole front uh, frontal wedgie. Uh, can you talk a little bit about filming that day? I understand that it was extremely cold, and Annalisa oh, had to wear a harness. God. Oh, it was the worst filming day. It was <sighs> horrible. It was cold the whole time. We couldn't even go swimming because it was the middle of winter. You know, it was just like we had to have hot chocolate and warming jackets, multiple warming jackets because it was so cold. We even had to have a warming van because it was so cold. Um, it was miserable. And um, everyone was miserable. Everyone was running around. It was very disorganized that day. Nobody knew what they were doing. We went. We stayed way too late. We didn't go home until like 11 o'clock. Um, it was, um, the shittiest day of filming by far. And, uh, Annalisa did have to wear a harness and they had to pull her up. They had to like pull her, some guy was standing there pulling her up, uh, by the string and he kept on dropping her every once in a while. I don't know if she told you all that. She probably <laughs> didn't want to complain, no. but he, he dropped her. And I was like, are you serious? I complained about it because I didn't want her to get hurt, but she's too nice to complain. So she was like, I'm fine, I'm fine. I was like, no, you're not fine. You just skinned your knee, you know? And um, I got upset. And um, But it was fun uh, doing that. It was fun, like, pulling her up. Basically what they did was they, like, made it look like her underwear was sticking out by sewing it to the pants or something. And I just basically grabbed it and, like, carefully – yanked while he pulled her up and uh then i threw her down and stunt double jesus lord like the stunt double almost died oh, <laughs> like she was uh <laughs> she she kept on getting thrown down to the ground like like five times and i thought she's gonna get a concussion or something because she didn't have a blanket or anything it was just ground you know and there was sticks and pebbles and rocks and stuff oh. and i was like are you okay and she's like no i'm fine i was like no you're not you're not fine. Um, and I felt really, really bad for the stunt double. But Annalise did great, and the stunt, do the stunt double did great. Um, it was fun filming that night, though, because we got to drink a lot of soda <laughs> instead of alcohol. <laughs> what would you say the best lessons taught at Cobra Kai are, and what would you say are the worst lessons taught? Uh, I think that the confidence that he teaches the kids and just the life lessons, I guess, that he teaches the kids are great. It's just all of his methods of teaching the kids are off. You know, like taking us to the junkyard and I was just going to say, yeah, and releasing a bunch of dogs is not cool. That was fun to film, though. That was by far my favorite day, even though it was a very long and hard day. 
um, the the junkyard scene, the, like throwing stuff out of the windows or uh, out of the buildings and destroying windows and running from junkyard dogs. That was very fun. But um, it was also not the best way of teaching children, impressionable children, how to do things, you know. Well, especially some that are like little, little kids. Like Bert. Yeah. <laughs> He's older. Wow, that is, like I, I, I would have never known that if you hadn't just told me that. I know. I know. He was actually 13 or something like that. And he, huh. I know he looked like he was about six years old, I know. <laughs> but I loved him. I loved, like, picking him up. And he would be like, put me down, because he wasn't a little kid. <laughs> he was a teenager. <laughs> so could you imagine me just standing there, like, oh, you're just so cute. You're just so cute. And then, like, she's like, please put me down. Please. Oh, that would, that would probably be fun for you. Probably not so fun for him, I can imagine. Well, I mean, yeah. I don't think you it's couldn't help it. You know? When I, you know, goggle over them and then pick them up because I'm a freaking Amazon. You know, speaking of Johnny and his teachings and stuff, the scene when he gets all new students, you know, everyone's kind of lined up and stuff, and he's going around kind of shading, you know, like all the different students. Did, yeah. Was that improvised? Is that scripted? And Oh, it was, the whole thing was scripted okay. pretty much. The whole thing was scripted, but uh, he would, you know, do what he thought was right and go with the flow on that, and I thought he did a great job. Watching him, we could not keep straight faces when he was filming. Yeah. We couldn't do, we couldn't, I'm telling you, like, I know this show was, like, not fully a comedy and everything like that, but we kept on breaking and laughing so many times because of the way that things were said. It was just so funny. I loved doing it because it was just so funny. I think that, um, you know, got to give credit to his comedic timing because the things that he says, what, I remember watching it for the first time, I, I nearly had tears in my eyes because it was so funny. It was horrible, right? the things he was saying. I can't imagine trying to keep a straight oh, yeah. face. No, it was impossible. Well, just the uh, the deadpan delivery that he has where he's not op- <laughs> he's not aware of how ridiculous he's sounding. I know, I know. And and I love that he, he's such a good actor that he almost convinces himself. He stays in character, like... He's hardly ever broke, and he was the one delivering the lines. Like, he hardly broke, and I was so proud of him. He, he He's an amazing actor, honestly. He just, like, became the character, and it was it was brilliant. I loved watching him. Well, just so you know, I, I actually uh, was at a convention where he was one of the panelists, and uh, somebody had asked him what it was like working with the kids, and he had nothing but high praise for all of you. So uh, it's a mutual feeling. Yeah, I felt like we all had a good bond, even though he did forget my name like a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't blame him. I don't. I don't feel bad about it at all. Like I, I'm not angry or anything like that. Like I get it. I understand. It's intense. I forget people's names too. But it was just. It was awkward at one time because like I was like, "Hey, what's up?" You know, Mister Zach by himself, and he was like, "Hey, girl." <laughs> I was like, girl. <laughs> yeah, he was like, what do you want me to call you, woman? I was like, how about my name? And he was like, okay, Aisha. And I was like, nice. Good. Very good. Close, Close enough. enough. Yep. <laughs> uh, sounds about right. <laughs> now, the, the the day of the tournament, I understand that it took a couple of different days because it was snowing. But just to kind of talk about the tournament a little bit, do you have any insight or what was going through Aisha's head when she loses to the former champion, uh, I kind of forget his name. It's like something Stone or? Oh, well, I don't know his, you know, I, I know his name is Tallin, you know, but. Uh, oh, the real name, yeah. I can't remember his, uh, something Stone or something. But uh, I know she was pissed. I, I know she was absolutely pissed. You know, she felt like she let Tipsy Lawrence down. She felt like she let Kobe Kai down. She wanted to win. She was in it to win it. She thought she, I, I know she she knew she probably wasn't going to win, but there was also a good chance she could win, you know, and she just, um, she was completely devastated because she wanted to prove everyone wrong that there, you know, she's a woman, but she could still do it. You know, she could still beat all these guys. I was going to say, she looked like she could beat my ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she just <laughs> uh, But um, I just, uh, I, I got upset when she lost. 
you know, and um, there were some other words that she was going to say that we had a few more uses for, if you know what I mean. But my mother was sitting there and she said, absolutely not. So um, <laughs> if that doesn't explain it for you, I don't know what will. I, we're, I, I pick up what you're laying down. Yeah. 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 Every time I get a chance to talk to anybody in this cast, I always have to ask the same question. Are you team Daniel or are you team Johnny? What kind of question is that? <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> team Johnny all the way. Did you all right. Team Daniel? <laughs> no, team Johnny all the way. Okay. I am Cobra Kai, you know, like Aisha's Cobra Kai. No doubt about Personally, it. I think I think almost all of the conflict in this entire series is Johnny's is uh, Daniel's fault in one way or the other. Even if I have to stretch oh the logic, gosh. it's, it's the Daniel's movies, fault. The old movies, it was all Daniel's fault. Daniel started it from the beginning, the first movie. Daniel's fault. Okay, I'm not even going to debate it. <laughs> You're not going to debate it with me because I've been saying it for years. <laughs> no, well, if you've been saying it, then you're on my team, right? You're on my hell yeah, that. hell yeah. Okay then. There's no debate there. I mean, what do you think, Peter? What do you think? Uh, I, after watching this show, I am Team Johnny. All right. Okay, you yeah. go. But but good. but I gotta We're say, I, I was Team Daniel, you know, for a couple of decades there because of the movie. Oh, okay. So you didn't pay attention to the movie? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best guest ever. Now, um, I do have a question because uh, Aisha and uh, Sam, they have that little talk. And Aisha's just talking about like, hey, we need representation. We need more, you know, girls and stuff. Do you see... The vagina talk. That's what we called it. Sorry? The vagina talk. That's what we called it. Oh, okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that. Because we say the word vagina. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> that's throwing me off a little bit here. Uh... Yeah, I know. <laughs> Now, if Sam were to, um, in season two, if she picks up the karate again and joins her dad with Miyagi-Do, do you see, like, a conflict? I'm going to beat her butt. Sorry? I'm going to beat her butt. You're going to beat her butt? Okay. Beat her butt. I think okay. that's where I was I'm going. Gonna win. That's where I was going. Yeah. You no. Know, no, if she joins and she all of a sudden competes in the next, you know, in the next tournament and I have to go against her, oh, my gosh, I'm probably spoiling stuff. I don't even know if that's official, but you know, like if that happens, no mercy. I'm gonna be like, let her. Yeah, no mercy, bitch. You feel? Yep. Oh, best guest ever. I'm loving this. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think uh, your character is gonna end up by the end of everything? Do you think that uh, she's gonna end up being basically the the good person that she still is, or do you think she's gonna unleash her inner bully? I think that it's going to be a roller coaster. You know, I think that she's going to get get it all to her head and she's going to be a total bully and then she's going to kind of dial it down and get back to earth. I think that's what's going to happen. I Excellent. think that she's going to get full Cobra Kai, go full out, go, you know, turn into Hawk almost. And then she's going to become, you know, Aisha again. I think she's going to be that nerdy sweet girl but also take no you know bull crap good for her you know you you should talk yeah. to the writers and perhaps um aisha can get a spinoff oh, i would watch cool. it <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> that'd be cool i would love that but i don't i don't see myself starring in anything anytime soon do you have any other projects coming out well, I have a few auditions right now that I'm looking for. The only project I have is maybe season two of Cobra Kai. But um, right now, my agent and I are just looking for anything. Excellent. I don't have anything right now. As we uh, get to the end here and ready to wind down, we've got a couple more questions. Uh, you kind of mentioned that your favorite day of filming was the junkyard scene. Do you have a favorite uh, episode or a favorite scene throughout the show, whether it's with or without you, your character? The most thing, like my most favorite thing by far was the food, uh, eating. Um, they they had this amazing catering system. That's the thing I enjoyed the most, if that's what you're wondering. But um, my favorite scenes, were definitely, even though it was miserable that night, was the wedgie. And also watching all the fighting and going through the fighting, like, uh, also, um, 
the funniest thing I did was probably the voiceover stuff where I had to stand in a room by myself and make grunting noises. That was interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> where I had to, you know, do the haya and stuff, but it, it just got weird because every, like I was standing there in a room by myself, but many people could hear me. So, and I knew many people could hear me. So it was just hard for me to do that because I was just making weird noises. Um, but yeah, I liked, you know, all of the fighting stuff, learning the sequences and fighting. That was just really cool. Even though, oh, here's a cool thing. Uh, not really cool, but I got a black eye. Oh, no. Um, in the middle, yeah, in the middle of practicing, in the middle of um, going over stunts and stuff, because I did my own stunts. I didn't have a stunt double, but I did my own stunts. Uh, in the tournament, I did my own stunts. That was the only episode where I did. And, um, uh, we were going over it, we were practicing it, and all of a sudden, there was a foot in my face, and my glasses were broken, and I got a nice, bloody black eye. <laughs> oh, it was no. great. <laughs> Is that why your character was wearing goggles? Uh, no, um, she was gonna wear goggles anyway, but it definitely did help. Uh, she, you know, she had to wear goggles because I couldn't have done that with my glasses, because my glasses were fine, but they didn't want anything to happen to where they would fly off in the middle of a really good take. Mm. So they just made me wear goggles. So they made this special for me, and they didn't even give them to me. Oh, so hopefully no. I get to wear them again next time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, what kind of souvenirs did you get from the from the other side? Anything? I actually, uh, I got like a, a bag, and um, in the bag was a nice uh, Cobra Kai jacket. I don't know if y'all have seen them. Mary has a picture of hers on her Instagram. The Cobra Kai and, crew uh, jacket? It's, it's, yeah, it's a crew jacket. It's It's got a big snake on the back and stuff and a snake on the front. And it's a nice gray and black hoodie. And it's just, it's really, it's a really nice jacket. And I, I really appreciate it. Um, I'm almost afraid to wear it sometimes because I feel like I'm just going to screw it up because I spill food on me all the time. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and then I also got a few other things like a signed uh, car, car thing. I don't know what it's called. Uh license plate thing but it's not really a license plate you know what i'm talking about oh yeah i think um didn't um i think gianni posted a, a picture of him holding one well with we the, all got the same stuff yeah autographs on it too yeah that's what i got and then i got i made a lot of friends on set and before leaving someone gave me a book someone else gave me like jewelry and stuff like that and i was also giving out gifts from to the people i had really connected with someone even gave me beef jerky so that was cool <laughs> now what kind of training did you end up doing for all of this i was trained by hito you know uh i don't know his last name but was he the um, referee he was yeah okay he was you know he was the stunt double from power rangers you gotta respect that man oh hey i'm a big oh, wow. power rangers fan yeah, he he's done a lot of stuff. He's amazing. He's got the cutest son ever and a really nice wife. His wife is also his son. She helped us. She's a beautiful lady. Really sweet. Um, he was an amazing, amazing man. We only did a few training sessions. Um, and the most training I got in one day was the day of filming. So, you know, <laughs> that was I, I was impressed with what I was able to do uh, with the amount of training I'd gotten, which was not much. I was gonna say I'm I'm even more impressed because Same. it looks like you had that down pat. That's really Thank cool. You. Yeah, I I um I studied it for two days basically. I had two days of training and then that was it and we filmed. Wow. Actually a day and a half really because that same day we filmed it. So um it was just intense. The stunt double, bless her heart, she did great, but she it just didn't look right. It didn't look natural. So they were like, all right, can you do it? And I was like, hell yeah, I can do this. You know? <laughs> and uh, I got really excited and stuff because I've always wanted to do my own stunts. And uh, I don't want to be a stunt person now. No, that's not what I'm saying. I don't want to get beat up for a living. That's not cool. <laughs> but uh, I did enjoy doing that. That was very fun. Now, with Cobra Kai being like a sequel, you know, if you want to call it a reboot, what have you, is there a property from the 80s or 90s that you would love to be a part of? Oh. Uh, I don't really know. Power um, Rangers? No. No. <laughs> uh, well, they're making another Terminator movie. Really? Oh, really? Oh. 
Oh no, <laughs> not a fan. Sorry. <laughs> not the biggest fan. I hope that is a loser. Oh god, don't put that in the. <laughs> what, what are you a fan of? Uh, I'm a fan of a lot of stuff. I really like music, and um, I like uh, I, I like watching movies. I like going to movies and stuff like that. Any type of movies. Uh, my boyfriend and I will go. Uh, we get like to go and um, eat at like the movie tavern and stuff like that. Uh, but um, I like uh, older stuff like um, Courage the Cat the Dog and things like that. I'm you know a 2000s kid. I grew up with the cooler uh johnny bravo things like that powerpuff girls yeah maybe you could voice a, a powerpuff girl maybe if they ever did a, a movie well i I, th I guess they've done well, they have a new show oh okay well there we go they have a new show they brought it out they brought they have a black powerpuff girl too nice oh very cool yeah i don't know if only in that <laughs> but um i don't know i just like the it was a simpler time when i was little so I it always is it. Um, being a native of Atlanta, uh, you mentioned that you're a big fan of music as well. Who were some artists that uh, maybe you listened growing up or currently listen to that may be from your area? I don't really know of anyone in my area. I mean, I just like listening to, um, I don't like country. That's my least favorite. Don't like country. But, um, I'm trying to think of anyone that's from my area. Usher. Uh, sure. Jermaine Dupri. I, I, I from Atlanta. I don't really listen to Usher. No. But my grandma, <laughs> my no. Uh, <laughs> I know. Uh, I listen to like old school rock and stuff, and then I listen to the Beatles, the Led Zeppelin, stuff like that. Nice. Um. Well, if you're into that kind of music, uh, I know the Black Crows are from Atlanta. Are they? They are. I'm not super familiar with them, but I have heard of them. I was gonna say, if you've heard some of their songs, you would you would recognize them. Yeah, probably. I've I've definitely heard of them, but I don't really not super familiar. Yeah. Oh, I take it back. They're from uh, Marietta. My mistake. I'm sorry. Marietta, Georgia, still thing. Close Same enough. thing. My mom used to live Close in Marietta. Enough. Uh are you are you guys from Georgia? No, actually, I'm from Portland, Oregon. I'm from Michigan. Oh. Okay. Oh. The last time I was in uh in Atlanta was. October of 2001, and I was there because uh, I I was in Fort Benning, Georgia, for training. Oh wow! Yeah, I've so only were been... you training for service and stuff? Yeah, I was in the army. Oh, thank you for your service. Oh, it was an honor to serve. It was right after I was I was in uh, Fort Benning when 9/11 happened. Oh wow! I was in my mom's arms. <laughs> Oh man! Because I was like nine months old. Well, you're the same age oh, as my man. son. Now I feel old. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that concludes our talk with Nicole Brown. Uh, I want to thank her again for coming on the show and talking to us. We had a lot of fun. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely uh, a blast. I should have asked her for that jacket. If she wasn't going to wear it, I will. Oh, and she needs to preserve that. <laughs> that could. That could easily buy her a car or a down payment on a house one day, I bet you. Yeah. You know, I was just thinking about this, you know, kind of wrapping up all, all of the interviews that we've done so far. This could, you know, they could easily do a spinoff and call it Cobra Kai, the next generation. You know, just be oh, yeah. about the kids, you know, once uh, Johnny and Daniel decide to maybe hang it up or something. But just a great group of kids. And, you know, I want to thank them all uh, for giving us the opportunity yeah, yeah, very, very good set of people, uh, and they say the same thing about each other. You know, they all support each other. They're giving. They're generous with one another. And you know, whoever the casting director of this show was, hats off to you, sir or ma'am. Yeah, absolutely. And we are available. And um, you know, I'll work for free. I don't know about Tom. <laughs> hey, you know what? I will be uh, background extra number thirty-seven. I have no problem with that. Just yeah. give me a hotel room and I'll be good. Sure. I, I, I will uh, be a bystander looking at Dirty Mags with Bert. Ew. <laughs> okay, never mind. All right. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody for not only listening to this episode, you know, just listening to our coverage of Cobra Kai. We know there are tons of other coverages out there and you guys decided to check us out. Uh, we created a, a few different platforms for you to kind of join in and 
talk to us, talk about Cobra Kai. We started a new Twitter account specifically just for our coverage at Cobra Kai Pod. Very simple. We're going to post all the links to the episodes in there. You want to talk to us, we are both running the account. But also, if you're more of a Facebook user, we have a group page. We recorded the first eight episodes pretty early. So at the time, we didn't know about a second season. We hadn't started a group page yet, but we do have one. It's called www.cobrakai.tvamb group. Just, you know, it's currently public right now. And just join in if you want to discuss any of the episodes we review, any of the interviews. All the cast members that we've talked to, they have Instagram accounts and they're all very interactive with the listeners. So hit them up, give them a follow, talk to them. Yeah. Uh, Now, Peter, where can people find you when you're not talking about Cobra Kai? Not Cobra Kai. I do a couple movie review podcasts. The best way to find me is on Instagram or Twitter at Paul Stalgic. What about you, Tom? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at the Drunken Dork. You can also find me on Facebook at a little page called Jake and Tom Conquer the Group. All right, so that's gonna do it for our Cobra Kai coverage, season one. Season two has been announced, so you know for damn sure we're gonna be back. As soon as they put them out, you'll hear from us again, if not sooner. Absolutely, and who knows? Maybe we'll even have some people return to interview them about season two. That'd be awesome. We may have already had a confirmation from one, so... Uh, I don't know. They were kind of cagey on that one, but... (laughs) (laughs) All right. So thanks, everybody, for listening to us. We will see you guys next time. See ya. See ya.